So up until this point, you've probably been working with arrays when handling large sets of data. Now, arrays have um, some advantages uh, rather than using, of course, lists of integers or whatever. Okay, some of those advantages, let's see advantages, okay, is that it has a quick addressing, oops, addressing system. Okay, and allows you to access items quickly. Okay, however, there are some disadvantages with arrays. Disadvantages, all right, disadvantages. One of them is that it has a set size. Okay, the other one is that it can only create uh, contain one type of data. Okay, and another one that's um, a little bit uh, weird that people generally don't think about is that it can only be sequential in memory, right? And what that means is that these elements, okay, so these elements, so this one, let's see here, I'll just put them here. The first element has to be, well, which is that element zero, Okay, has to be the first element, has to be uh, located in this spot in memory, for instance. Okay, the next element, element one, has to be in the next memory spot. Okay, and that's a consequence of the addressing system. Right? If you don't understand how arrays work, then this lesson is probably not going to make that much sense to you. Okay, but so we have our simple addressing system like this. Okay, now just to reiter reiterate quickly, what we're doing really when we're talking about an array, okay, so let's say I create an array called Manta. I always call all my arrays Manta because uh, Manta is a type of array. Okay. What we're doing is we're actually just creating a reference that points to the first memory address, right? And then with the ad, with the indexing system, what we're doing is we're telling the computer how far to move up from that spot. Okay, and that's why all the all the items have to be the same type because they all have to be the same size, right? So what I'm saying is, if this is integers, move. If I say Manta three, it means go to Manta zero and move up three spots. Okay, so it's one, two, three. And that's why Manta zero starts at zero. Yeah, that's just a quick review. Now, some of the disadvantages though, um, sometimes are kind of insurmountable or, or they're problematic, right? One of them, like I said, is that they have to be sequential, but also that the size is set. Now, let's say for instance, we are given a problem where uh, we're trying to model I don't know, like a student population at a school, but you don't know how big the school is, right? So this could be like a small private school with like 50 kids or 30 kids, um, or it could be a, a large school with 30,000 kids, like a university or something. Now, when you're programming that, you actually have no way of knowing how many people are going to be in the school to begin with. And many languages don't let you resize the arrays once they're created. Right, so there's what most programmers will do up to this point is that they'll just make gigantic arrays that um, that would encompass anything that they could possibly imagine. So if in that case, they would probably make an array of size like fifty thousand or something. Right, that way they can always use, they always have enough space. Right, the problem with that is that let's say this this software is purchased by like some small rural school or something it has only 200 people now you've used up 50,000 memory spots but you only need 200 of them right um, and so you end up wasting a lot of this space right another item another problem is uh, sometimes when you're doing sorting for instance um, if you wanted to put an item in between let's say this or this array was full if I wanted to put an item into this spot what I would have to do is, assuming I had an empty spot at the end, I would have to shift all the spots over. So I'd have to shift and shift and then 
and then uh, put the item into spot three. Now this doesn't seem so bad for a size six array, right? but let's say you do have a size, you know, 300,000 array, right? This shifting could actually be really expensive in, in, uh, process, in terms of processing, All right? So there's a couple things that we would like to be able to do. Oh, uh, sorry. One last thing is that one type of data. Sometimes we'd be able to like, it wouldn't it be nice if you could link different types of data? Um, that, well, there is a way to do that, right? So anyways, yeah, get rid of that. Okay, so one thing, one thing we could do, okay, is we could actually just break up the array, right? So we could actually just say, you know what? Like, if I want to, why do they have to be sequential? Okay, why can't I just break them apart? Okay, so this way I can use the memory more effectively. Okay, and I can just break these apart. Okay, and so on and so forth. Now I'm only gonna have room to show four nodes here, okay, or four elements here. Now what do I do is I still refer to just my first uh, array, but now if I wanted to add a new one in, okay, well, let me, let me just uh, start here. Let's say for instance, this was the first node and I'll just list them sequentially, okay, the first element. All right, now the problem is that I've lost my indexing system. Right, because I wouldn't have any way of referring to the next the location of the next node in or the next element in memory. Right? So what I'd have to do is I'd have to include in each one okay, some reference to point to the next one here. Okay, so the location of the next item. Okay, and this one would have to point to the location of the next item as well. And this one would have to point to the next item. Now, one of the problems is, well, what does this one point to? All right. Uh, what you'd have to do is you'd have to say that this one would point to null. Okay, so it points to nothing. All right, and that kind of makes sense. All right, so now this is no longer called an array. This is called a linked list. And the reason why this is an effective structure okay, is because it gets rid of all of the different um, disadvantages that arrays have. Okay, so let me show you. For instance, if I wanted to add another another element, okay, so let's say a 5, or let's say um, something like a 2.5. Right? Well, what I could do is I could just take this reference. So I just create the new element, and I just take this reference, okay, and I move it to point to here. And then I take this one and I would point it to here, right? And that way I can just easily insert an item into the middle of the list. And I don't actually have to, I don't actually have to worry about, you know, shifting or shuffling items. Um, and, and this way the, the list is always the exact size that it needs to be. So if you needed to have a list of 30,000, then it's a, the size of it is 30,000. If I get rid of an item, or let's say I got rid of 10,000 items, then the size would be 20,000, right? So I'm not creating these gigantic lists that I don't actually need this need to use that much space for, right? So you actually have good uh, memory economy, right? Now, one of the trade-offs though, is that you've lost your indexing system, right? So there's no way for you really to get to uh, different parts. You can't say Manta 5 anymore or something like that, because that just doesn't make sense because these things are no longer sequential in memory, right? But that's one of the trade-offs that we have to make with uh, when using a linked list. Now, it's important to know that a linked list isn't always appropriate, right? So sometimes using an array is way easier um, and way more effective because of the instant access. And even sometimes, um, because we're because we're really dealing with um, computers nowadays that have gigantic memory sizes, so it doesn't really matter sometimes if you're losing if you're wasting a little bit of the memory, all right? Um, so just because this has this advantage, um, like you're looking for, you're going to use this in a specific case when you need this specific advantage. Okay, being able to put things into the middle of the list and having the the list to be exactly the right size that it needs to be.
All right. All right. So one of the things, so this is okay. So this is called a linked list. Okay. Now, when you're navigating the list, okay, what we do is we start at the first reference. Okay. Now this would be here. Okay. And that's the first reference. And what we do is we just go to each item. Now each item is called no longer no longer called an element. It's called a node. Right. So we go from Manta. Okay. Where Manta points to, which is the start of the list, and we go to node number one. And then we follow the pointer that or the reference that node one has to tell us where node two is. All right. So we follow it to go to node two, and then so on and so forth. Then we go to node two point five. Right, follow that one to three, and then follow that to four, and we know that we're at the end of the list because we get to null. Now, one of the problems though is that we cannot navigate backwards in the list, right? Um, because this is a single direction linked list. What I like to do is I actually like to design this, okay, so that where did my mouse go? There it is. All right, so I like to design that so it actually has a reference pointing back to the previous node. Now this is going to be a little more work, right? But it actually makes, it actually has a little more, a few more advantages. Okay, so there are some advantages to doing this. All right, again, you don't always need this, but being able to do this actually is kind of a, a nice thing. All right, and it makes a lot of other things, uh, a lot of other tasks easier, right? being able to go backwards in the list. Now, if you're going to be able to go backwards, uh, what you're going to need, uh, we no longer will call this Manta here. Okay. We will call it first. Okay, sometimes people call it the root or um, sometimes it's called like the start or something like that, but I just call it first. All right. To, in order to go backwards, we need one called last as well. Okay, to point out where the last uh, where the last node exists. All right, and that would be your essentially your uh, simple bidirectional linked list. All right. So what does this look like in code? All right. First of all, um, I'm just going to draw a better representation of a node. Okay. So the first thing we need is to draw a node. Okay, so when I draw nodes, I actually just draw them like this. Mm -hmm. All right, so something uh, that bothers me. Okay, so I draw something like this, right? So I have a node. And what it is, is I have the data at the top. Okay, so the data that the node is holding. And I also have uh, the references okay, um, on the bottom. All right. Let me just draw these here. Okay, so this is where the, the previous one is, and this is gonna point to the next one. All right, this would be the data that goes in here. One of the things I talked about, but I'm not going to program uh, because it's a little more of an advanced concept right now, is that each one of these nodes can hold different data, right? Uh, what you'd have to do is you'd have to create, if you know how to do this, you have to create a linkable template, right? And then what you would do is you just uh, satisfy the conditions for each template. And then as long as they satisfy those conditions, you can add it as a node uh, so long. And it doesn't really matter what the data is as long as it's linkable. All right, but uh, that's kind of a more advanced concept that we're not going to talk about today, All right? But you can have different types of data within the node. All right, I'm going to need a couple of these, so I'm just going to copy this and just stick it over in the corner here. All right, but this is not the one in the corner is not part of the the array, uh, not part of my list. All right, it's just a copy sitting there, so I can reference it whenever I need it. Okay, so the first thing is we've got to design this thing. 
So the first thing we're going to have to do is to uh, represent the node, and for that we're going to have to create a new project. Okay, so yeah, create a new Java project. And I'll call this linked list. All right, inside that project, I'm going to create a new package. Uh, I'm just going to call that codes for now. Oh, okay, I already previously created that, so uh, that's why it's saying it already exists, but I'd have to create a new one called codes. Okay, we just need to delete this because I had it already previously created. Okay, so now the, inside that package, what I'd have to do is create a new a new um, class called a node. Okay, so new class called a node. Now, keep in mind this public static void main is not required for this right now. So we're going to finish that. Okay, so we have a public class node. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, what is a node made out of? All right, well, a node is made of data. Okay, so it has some data item. Now, in this case, we're just going to use a simple integer because it's just the easiest one to use. All right. Um, okay. The other thing, this is going to be a little bit weird. And the node actually has a node in it. Okay. Now, remember though, when we create these names of objects, normally it would look something like this. Um, the next is equal to new node. Okay, that's what it typically would look like. Right, remember that this just creates the name, this actually creates the node. So this doesn't actually have a node in it. It only has the name of a node in it, okay, a reference to a node. Right, so it's not actually containing a node. Okay, so we have next and previous. And these are the references that are going to point from one to the other. Okay, so from one node to the next node. Right, I'm going to build a constructor for this that might help out, or that will help out. And I will just uh, automatically generate those. Uh, and along with the getters and setters, generate getters and setters, select all, OK. The source, constructor. Okay. I'm just going to make a, I always like to make a default constructor, even though I generally don't use it. Okay, um, that's weird. Okay, and let's just actually program the other one from scratch here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is in the public node, if I just generate the node randomly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, data is equal to math.random. I don't know, modulus 100 or times, times 100. So just a random number from 1 to 100, right? Um, I'm not going to really use this one anyways, but actually that's kind of stupid because if I, accident, if I accidentally use this, I would not be able to notice that I'd accidentally use this. So I'm going to put a data as negative 1 just as a sign that I maybe accidentally used this, okay? Then next is equal to null and previous is equal to null, right? Now, the other node that, the other constructor I'm going to make is going to take a data item, right? And just like down here, okay, where we were setting different items or uh, different lists or properties of this, right? What we're going to do is we're going to be able to say um, this data is equal to data, all right? So we're going to say this dot data is equal to the data. All right, now we're now that we've created the node. Okay, essentially what we have is that box that we had in our previous screen, 
right? So we have a data item and a pointer moving from one item to the next item. All right, let's go from there. What we're gonna have to do next is we're gonna have to make a new class, okay? And the new class is going to have the list itself. Okay, it still does not have a main program. Okay, so now we have a linked list. Now, let me just jump back to the illustration here. Okay, so here's our illustration. Now, uh, you may have noticed that my screen size has changed a little bit here. Um, the reason why I've done this is because this way I can flip between um, Eclipse and, um, and Paint, where I'm building all these things. Um, but um, this way, like, I find that if I show the menus, and sometimes YouTube doesn't like it because it thinks I'm using copyright material. So anyway, so that's just a technicality of how I'm programming or how I'm making these programs. Right. Anyways, so we have this uh, node here. Okay, so let's see. This part here is the data. This is next, and this is previous. All right, so now when we're making our linked list, okay, let's just see here. Okay, it's good to define a node, and that's what I've done down in the corner. Okay, I've said what a node is. But really, what we need to do is start off with a pointer. Okay, or if you're a Java guy, you probably will object to me using the word pointer, but it's a reference. Okay. Okay, so you make a first reference, right? Now that's going to point to the first node into the in the list. Okay. Now the way that looks is go like this: private node first. Okay. Now we don't actually create um, a node there yet. All we need is just the reference there. Okay. Similarly, we need one pointing to the last. Okay. And sometimes I like to include a count. Okay. Or a size. Right. Um, the reason why is just because it makes things a little bit easier to. Uh, to do later on. Okay, so it's it's an increased functionality. It's a marginal amount of work to to add, but it's a it's a nice thing to have um, just once in a while. In certain applications, it makes things easier, right? To know how big the list is. Okay, so that's all we're going to have right now. Now, first thing we're going to do is we are going to create a method where we're going to push an item onto the list, and the command is actually going to be called push, right? So Let's see, creating a method to add a node to the list. Okay, well, it's going to be public static. Okay, it's not going to return anything. So public static void. Uh, actually, sorry, it's not static. Public void. Um, push. Okay, in order to push something, I'm going to need the data. Okay, ah, I forgot something, sorry. All right, um, we're going to need the constructor. Okay, so in order to get the constructor, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just say public like list. Okay, first is equal to null, last is equal to null, so they're pointing at nothing to start with, and the size starts at zero. Okay, so starting conditions are set. Okay, creating a method to add a node to the list. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is want to obviously create a node. Okay, so we're going to say node. Now I'm gonna most most books I've read on this and I've seen examples, they do this node new node is equal to new node. Alright. Most people hate this type of notation because they find it confusing because you have all these nodes and news and stuff like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna call mine temp. Okay. 
So what we're having is just a temporary pointer, or oh, sorry, not a pointer, a temporary node that we've created, right? It's not actually temp, the name is temporary, but the node will persist. Okay, so we say node uh, temp is equal to new node. Okay, I find that a lot of people find this to be easier to look at uh, in code. All right, so what does that make? Well, okay, so we have our, okay, so we have our, um, class, we have a first, okay, we have a last, okay, a size variable, which I'm not going to put in, all right, and what we did is just we created a new node, okay, and that new node's name is temp, okay, and we're going to give it some uh, a data item as well, okay, new node is equal to new node, and we give it a constructor data item, so it's going to be I don't know a one, or Actually, it was sorry. It was the data would have already been sent to us through in the in the as an argument to this parameter data. So you node know, data. So we're going to pass that through. Okay. Now I'm just going to put a one there just because it makes it easier for us. All right. So we're just going to create them sequentially for now. But really, uh, you can actually just create them in any order you want or with any data you want. Okay. So I'm just going to put a one there just to show that it's the first node that we created. All right, so when this first comes into existence, the constructor that we built will set this to be one. This is going to be null. And this is also going to be null. All right, now the problem is that this first reference and last reference has not been pointing to the, to the, um, to the node yet. So that's what we have to do here. Okay, so we need to say first is equal to temp and last is equal to temp. All right, so that what that will do is it will take this first and actually point it to the temp, this last and actually point it to the temp. All right, the other thing we have to do is we have to say size plus plus. All right, so then we have a proper array and we started the first we are proper linked lists. We go to the first, we start it, then we go to one, and then null. And we know we're at the end of the list because we get to null. All right, so we get, we at the other side, we go to last, one, and null. So it's working properly in both directions. All right, that's really quite simple. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna add another one. Okay, so we're gonna add another node here. All right, now, this is a, this is going to be a little bit trickier, so I'm just going to put it here. Now, when we first create this, okay, well, when the before I do this, okay, so what's going to happen is that when the method ends, okay, temp, okay, temp was a name that was created by the method, so when the method ends, the name temp is going to be destroyed, right? Now, what this means is that this node has no name, right? Well, or does it? Right. Remember, if you know if you know about classes, which you should, otherwise you shouldn't be watching this video. Um, that as soon as an object has no name attached to it, Java's garbage collection will destroy it. Right. So if you remove that temp, well, how come it didn't get destroyed? Well, the reason why is because it actually has two names. Right. So right now the first reference is pointing to it, and the last reference is pointing to it. Right. And that means that we have two names associated with this, so it's actually safe from being destroyed. It will not get garbage collected. All right, so then what we did is we create a new a new node. Okay, that node, when it gets created, will be called temp, right? Because that's the first line. Node temp is equal to new node data. Now, these ones, these commands, um, aren't ones that we always do, 
or sometimes we might always do them. Okay, now first equals temp. Okay, we only want the first ref the first reference to point to the, the temporary node if it's the first one. All right? So we're gonna have to put a condition there. I'm gonna say if temp or if first is equal to null. Okay, so if first equals to null, then first equals temp, right? Makes sense, right? So if this is the first node in the list. All right, now what we're gonna do is we are going to set this up in a queue formation, all right? I'll talk more about stacks and queues in another time, but what basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna always push things onto the end of the list. Okay, there's other ways to push things. For instance, you could push it into the beginning of the list or you could actually just push it into its numeric order or things like that. But just for simplicity right now, we're gonna push it onto the end of the list. Okay, so if first is equal to null, first is equal to temp. Otherwise, well, what do we do? Okay, well, like in this case, what do we do? Okay, so obviously the first is not gonna point, uh, is not gonna refer there. So what we really need to do is we need to get somehow we need this node to refer back to this temp. Okay. Well, this one is actually called is actually not just the first node, but it's also the last node. Okay. So what we're going to say is last dot. Okay. No. Uh, set next. Okay. So we're going to set the next node from the last one to be uh, temp. Okay. So remember this is the next reference. It's no longer to point gonna point to null. Instead we are going to get that I need to make a smaller box here, sorry. Okay, so instead, you're going to get this to say, hey, you're going here. Okay. Actually, I'm just going to make this a little bit nicer of an arrow here. All right, like that. And we'll call this node 2. All right, so the last next pointer, okay, so last's next pointer or reference is going to point to the temporary uh, node that we just created. All right, now does that look right? If we start, okay, remember when this gets created, this is gonna be null and this one's gonna be null, okay? Now, I'm not gonna write in all the nulls right now just because it's a pain, all right? But any, um, you need just to know that any dot here, so any reference that I have actually not drawn an arrow on is automatically pointing to null, right? That's just the way that I've built the, the constructors, all right? So we have first going to one, one refers to two, and two is gonna refer to null, okay? And so the list is going uh, is built correctly in the, in the forward direction, okay? But in the reverse direction, we go to last, and last is referring over to one. So what we really need to do is refer last, okay, over to two. Okay, so what we do is we say, well, last is equal to temp, is that right? Yes, All right? And then the size increases by one, and then we're done. Okay, now when the method uh, fin completes, the name that was created in the method gets destroyed. Okay, now is that right? Let's see, we have last, we have last pointing to two and then to null, right? So this is obviously not created correctly. We need to have a reference pointing back from node two back to node one. Okay. However, um, let's take a look. What we could do is we could just say something like this: um, last dot previous or dot set previous to be first. Okay, 
Sorry, we already moved this. Okay, now this will seem to work. All right, so last set the previous to point over to the first. Okay, but this will only work if this is the second node. All right, when we add a third node, when we say last uh, previous or last set previous back to the first, what we'll do is we'll create node three, and node three will refer back to node one. Right, that's not what we want. Okay, so this is not going to work as we wanted. Okay, instead, what we had to do is we had to actually set um, like this. So we need to say we have to move this back first. Okay, so we're not going to move last to be equal to temp yet. All right, we're not going to set this. Instead, what we're going to say is temp dot set previous. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to set it to be pointing to the last item. Okay, now the order, this is why the order of operations or the order of your commands actually really matters with this. Okay, so last dot set previous or temp dot set previous equals last. Okay, so temp sets its previous pointer reference to be last. Okay, that's correct. And after we've done that, then what we can do is move the last reference over. All right. So last then is equal to temp. Okay, size plus plus, and then temp gets destroyed. Okay, and our list then goes from last to two, over to one, and null. First, one, over to two, and then null. Okay. And I'm just going to get rid of this just to be consistent. Okay. So, will this work for a third node? That's a good question. All right. So let's see what happens. Let's follow the code. Okay. So let's say, for instance, we want to add a three to the data. So no temp equals new no data. Okay. So. No temp. Okay, this one's just going to be called temp. Okay, is it equal to a new node to data? And let's just say the data is three. If first equals null, okay, well it doesn't. Okay, otherwise last dot set next temp. Okay, so last. So this one set its next reference over to be temp. Okay. Temp dot set previous. It's last. Okay. Last is equal to temp. Okay. And size plus plus. Okay. And so let's see. Going in the forward direction, we have first, one, two, three, null. In the reverse direction, we have last, three, two, one, null. Okay. Now, one of the problems though is that we have no way of actually knowing if this is working. So we think it's working, but we have no way of actually knowing if it's working or not because we have no way of seeing the what we are having display. So what we need to do next is to create a display. Display the entire list. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make public void display. Now it doesn't need any parameters. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to say node temp is equal to first. Okay, so all we're going to do is just set a temporary pointer to be the first node, to point to the first node. Okay, um, I'm going to also put a caveat here. So if first is not equal to null, okay, meaning there's actually something in the list to, to display. Okay. The, the reason why is that if there's nothing in the list, when you refer to a part of a node, so if I say node uh, get data, for instance, then I'm going to get an error because there's actually no, no node there. All right. So you can't go to a, a null, like a, a section that's null and try and access a part of null because there is no part of that. Okay. So we have to put that there. If, per, if first is equal, not equal to null, then, then we can do this. Okay. So node temp is equal to first. All right. So, okay. 
So what I have is tem is equal to first. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is just say system dot dot print line or dot print, not print line, just print system of print, and I'm going to say something like um, temp dot get data plus space. Okay. And that should be enough just for what we're doing here. Okay, now what that's going to do is just print the data at the first node. Right? So we can try that out for now, or actually we can't even try it out for now because we don't have a main program yet. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so new class. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to call this, um, I don't know, like list tester. Okay, for this one, we are going to this class, we're going to need the main program. Okay, so think list tester. Okay, now to create a new linked list, we're going to say linked list, and I'm just going to call it list is equal to a new linked list. Okay, um, so far it doesn't seem to have any errors. I'm going to say list dot push one. Okay, so I'm going to push some items onto the list just to try it out. Two and a three. Okay, and then what I'm going to try and do is list dot display. All right, so let's take a look. A one. Now that actually seems to be correct. Okay, the reason why is because all we did is just say, just show us what temp is, and temp is pointing at the first, or is referring to the first node, and so it's referring to one. All right, so. Okay, let's go back to this now. Okay, so after we display the first one, okay, what we're gonna have to do is move to the next one. And we're gonna say temp is equal, or, okay, so temp is equal to temp dot next. Actually, because it's private, it won't be able to do this. Temp dot get next. Okay, so we're going to say temp is equal to temp.getNext. So we're going to go to its next one. Now, we're going to have to keep doing this as long as temp is not equal to null. So as long as temp is not equal to null, So as long as temp is not equal to null, we're going to print the data from there and then move to the next one. All right, so let's try that out and see what happens. Okay, so one, two, three. Now, one of the things that people often forget, okay, is that you also have to print it backwards, okay, if you're building a reverse linked list. Okay, so I'll explain why in just a second. So we're going to go last. Okay, so set temp to be equal to last. I'm going to print out the data and temp. And instead of going to get next, I'm going to get the previous one. Okay, in between, what I'm going to do is get a system of print line, just to put a, a space there. Okay, to separate them. And at the end of everything, I'm going to put another system I'll print line. All right, just to uh, make things neat. Okay, so let's try and run it. Okay, one, two, three, three, two, one.
Now the reason why you have to do it both forwards and backwards when you're testing is because it's possible to link the, the list properly in the forward direction but, all, but not properly in the reverse direction and vice versa. So it's possible to, for it to be linked correctly in reverse but not in the forward direction. Okay, so you have to test it in both directions to make sure it's going, it's working properly. All right, so so far so good. Let's add, let's add a few more items here. We'll just go size six. Okay, so four, five, six. Okay, I'm going to add just something uh, for the display, and I'm going to have um, system. Oops. System on print line. Size is plus list dot get size. Okay, I don't think I built that method yet, so I have to go there and do that. Actually, because it's built in the method itself, I don't even need to do that. Just so I can just say size. It's not a method. All right, good. Let's try it out. The size is six. Okay, good. What would happen if I called it with none of these pushes? So I've just displayed an empty list now. Okay, nothing. Um, that's not really that great. So I'm gonna just say else. Okay, print line, the list is empty. Okay, so I print it, the list is empty, good. Okay, if I put back the, these pushes in. Okay, it seems to work. What if I just have just one? One, okay, good. All right, so now that we're able to display the list and also to um, to add items to the list, um, now the last thing we have to do is just look at how to remove something from the list. Now, what I'm going to do is, in this case, I'm just going to only remove something from the end of the list, okay? So when we push something on, we're pushing something on to the, onto the end, and then when we add something, we're also adding it to the end. Or when we're removing it, we add something to the, to the list, we add it to the end. When we remove it, we remove it from the end. All right, there's ways you can add, uh, remove it from the middle, and uh, we can do that as well, uh, but I'll do that in another video. All right, so uh, let's see here. Okay, so let's take a look here. Here's my display. All right, so moving an item from the list. Okay, so it's going to be public void, and the method of, uh, name is going to be pop. Okay, so we're going to pop an item. Now I'm not going to provide a data item to pop because we're just going to pop the last item from the list. Okay, so the first thing we're going to say is if last does not equal to null. Okay, so what we're going to do is just make sure that the list isn't empty. Because if the list is empty, then there's nothing to pop off of it, and then you don't have to do anything. And, okay. So if last equal is not equal to null, let's see what we're going to have to do with that. Okay, so a lot of people will just say, well, okay, let's just do that. All right, and I guess we could, we could do that. Um, actually, that might not be too bad. But one thing we have to be careful of when we're doing operations with the linked list is that we don't um, make a node that has no way of referencing it. All right, that's called orphaning a node. All right, Java's garbage collection will automatically destroy an orphan. But in the in other languages like C++, for instance, it, that that object will still be in your memory, and there's no way to access it anymore. And then it just sits there in your memory and uses up space. All right, um, it's actually referred to as a memory leak. Okay, so what happens is when you create a node, if you do, if you create an object in in your memory, if you dereference it, right, so there's no more names pointing to it, 
in some languages that will just persist, right? It just stays in your memory. And let's say, for instance, you have like some loop that generates like 10 of these every time it runs and it runs, I don't know, like, you know, 500 times a second. Well, it's like 5,000 nodes that you're running like every single or 500, 5,000 orphans you are making every second, right? That just sit in your memory and use up all your RAM, right? So you got to be sure to um, get rid of those. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to just, before we move this, okay, um, we're going to have to check to see if there's one item or two items in the list, right? If there's only one item, then it's going to be uh, a little bit trickier there, or a little bit eas easier. Okay, so what we can do is we can say if last is e not equal to null and last dot now this is where it's going to get a little bit weird. Get get previous dot get previous does not equal to null. Okay, so it's kind of weird that we could do that. Okay, so what is that? Last, okay, so this is last, number three is last. Get previous. Okay, actually, I think we just only need that. Okay, so last dot get previous is not equal to null. So there's a last and a previous. In there. So there's more than one item in the list. Okay, we could have done this with just with the size as well. So if we could say if if size was um, greater than or equal to two. Okay, so if there's at least two items in the list, then do this. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say last is equal to last dot get previous. Okay, so we have last is pointing at last get previous. So now it's pointing there. All right, now what we have to do is we have to remove this. So now we can say last dot set next to be null. Okay, now what will that do? Okay, well, that's going to take this reference and set it to be, or as I said, the ones with no arrows are null, right? So it's going to take that and just get rid of it. Okay. Now, what's what's referring to number three? Well, nothing, right? It's completely dereferenced. Now, remember what happens when something is dereferenced? Well, Java's garbage collection will notice it and destroy it. Okay, and so it just gets destroyed. Okay, like that. And now our list is still intact. Okay, the only thing I have to do is I have to say size minus minus. Okay, decrease the size. I don't know how that happens. Size minus minus. Okay, there we go. Let's take a look and see what happens. Let's test it out. So go to our class. And we'll say list dot pop. Okay. I'm only going to put three items onto the list right now. Okay, and then I'm going to have to display it again just to verify that it's actually uh, it's actually removed. So let's take a look. Okay, so this originally it was one two three three two one. The size is three. Now it's just one two and two one, and the size is two. Okay, what would happen if I just popped again? Okay, so that's one, two, three, three, two, one, and then it popped twice, so the two and the three came off. So it's just one and one, and the size is one. Okay, now if I were to pop again, nothing's gonna happen, right? Because I said only do this if the size is greater than or equal to two. Okay, so let's go over to our linked list class. We'll say else if size is equal to one. Okay, so it's slightly different. Okay, so if this if there's only one item left, okay, 
then our list will look something like this. Okay, so this will be pointing at null. Okay, and I want to get rid of this last item. All right, so all I have to do is just take away the references and I just say first and last, first is equal to null and last is equal to null. And that's it. Oh, and size minus minus. Okay, and that's it. All right, so, oh. Uh, yeah. Actually, I think I didn't even need to say last, that's set next. No, I didn't need to do that. I could have just said last is equal to null. All right, there we go. And for some reason it didn't like it. Why didn't it like it? Let's take a look. Last equals last dot get previous. Hmm, interesting. Oh, yes. Last is equal to last get previous. That's right. Last is equal to null. Okay. Let's see if that works. Oh, there we go. Okay. I guess I did need that. Okay. So there we go. Then we have our list one two three three two one size three and then we pop three times and the list is empty okay let's go back to our testing I can't stress enough how important proper testing is right so we need to test like a lot of different situations uh, to make sure that everything's working right especially when you're doing linked list operations it's really easy to mess something up so it looks like it's working correctly but it's not always working correctly all right so let's take a look uh, run it Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, pop three times, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, size 3, and repeat that again. Okay, now the list is empty. What would happen if I tried to pop again? Okay, so, okay, so the list is empty, the list is empty. Okay, so nothing happens if I try and pop again. That's good. All right. Now that is the basis for a linked list class, right? So you have able to add something to a list, display it, both forwards and backwards, and then you are also able to remove an item from the list. And that's the foundation for making your own linked list class.